Is it ready? Blessings and peace to each and every one of you this morning. We greet you in the marvelous and wonderful name of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. We're so thankful for this day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, my name is Tan Moss, and I am the proud pastor of the Greater Grant Memorial African Methodist Episcopal Church, and uh, it's my honor to greet each and every one of you on behalf of all of our ministers and our officers and our members of the Greater Grant Church on this Mother's Day. I want to express a happy Mother's Day to uh, each and every one of our mothers out there, all of our prospective mothers, our grandmothers, uh, our surrogate mothers, those who are aunts and cousins, and those who have adopted children and who have loved children and nurtured children. Uh, I just wish you a happy Mother's Day. There is uh, nothing more special than mothers, and we celebrate you today, and we just give God honor for each and every one of you and pray that you are just showered with love and with flowers and uh, a good meal, and uh, your family just comes from all around just to bless you because you have been such a blessing unto us. We are still sheltering in, in place. We are not meeting in the sanctuary. Uh, I'm here in, in the home of Sister Brenda Moss, and and uh, you are in your worship uh, sanctuaries at your homes all over Duval County and the state of Florida and maybe even outside of the state of Florida. We just greet all of you on this wonderful day in the Lord. We are, are still uh, practicing social distancing and I still encourage uh, each and every one of you, especially in that we see the state of Florida and uh, many of the other states around the country are now beginning to uh, open up again. The beaches have been open. Uh, hair salons and barbershops and restaurants are, are being open and we're getting ready to start mixing and mingling. But we know that this virus is still present. Uh, we know that people are still getting sick by the virus and, and people are still dying. And we pray for it. it the number is almost 80,000 people now who have lost their life to this virus. And we most certainly pray God's blessings upon their spirits and, and God's blessings upon their families. And we just believe that God is going to cover us and God is going to keep us and shelter us. Uh, but we're going to do what uh, what is expedient for us. Uh, we're going to shelter in place and we're going to be careful uh, when we go out to wear our mask and to continue to wash our hands and to continue to do social distancing uh, so that we can get through this. Uh, and I believe that we're going to come out uh, better than we than we went in. So we just give God glory and we give God praise uh, on this Mother's Day. I want to thank you for everything that you've done over the course of these past uh, six, seven weeks of, as we have been away from the sanctuary. We have still been connected with each other uh, and we just thank God for all of those who were uh, on a Bible Discovery Hour this morning as well as our Bible study and those who have met with us through Zoom that we might be able to conduct the business of the church uh, thank God for your faithfulness, for your, your giving has been tremendous, and uh, we're just so thankful for God giving us the overflow in this season. Uh, next Sunday, next Sunday, we're celebrating, uh, we're celebrating Mother's Day today, but on next Sunday, the third Sunday uh, in the month of May, we are celebrating church anniversary, and the Lord has allowed the Greater Grant Church uh, to celebrate 131 years of our faithfulness uh, our service to humanity, our service to this community. And, and although we're not meeting in the sanctuary, we're still going to celebrate 131 years of God's faithfulness towards us and God's faithfulness uh, to the people of the Greater Grant Church. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to give a sacrificial offering over and above my tithe of $131 in celebrating church anniversary. And I want each and every one of you who will uh, to join me uh, as the Lord uh, gives ability and as the Lord blesses. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, let's worship God just for a minute, and and um, and uh, then we will see what the what the Word of God will say to us today. Amen. I have seen a rainbow circle across the sky. I have stood on a mountain and watched an eagle fly. I've seen trees in a meadow shelter a morning dove. 
But I've never seen anything to match the wonders, oh, the wonders of a mother's love. This is for my mothers today. I have seen a sunset more beautiful than gold. I have stood by a rosebud and watched the leaves unfold. I've seen so many wonders and blessings from above, but I've never seen anything to match the wonders all oh, the wonders of a mother's love. I have seen a sunset more beautiful than gold. I have stood by a rosebud and watched the leaves unfold. I've seen so many wonders and blessings from But I've never seen anything. No, I've never seen anything. No, I've never seen anything to match the wonders, all oh, the wonders of a mother's love. Amen. God bless you to all my mothers out there. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we bless you, praise you, honor you. We give you honor and glory because you are our God. Uh, you are our strong tower. You are our leaning poles, our bridge over troubled water. Uh, on uh, this 10th day of May, God, as we come to celebrate mothers, we thank you for the gift of motherhood and uh, all of the mothers uh, throughout uh, Duval, throughout this country, throughout the world that have given life uh, unto us, oh God, who have nurtured us and who have supported us. We pray your blessings upon them. Strength, God. Uh, we pray, God, that the love that they are so deserving of from their families and their friends, God, will be showered upon them today, that they might know just how special, unique, and gifted they are. Uh, we thank you for being our God in this season of uncertainty. You are a certain God. You are a present help in the time of all types of trouble. And we just thank you, God. And we continue to look to you as the source of our strength, the source of our help, and the source of our healing. Have your way now, God, in this season. Bless and keep us and strengthen us and encourage us with a word, God, and let us know uh, that you're still on the throne, God, that you haven't abdicated your authority and your power. Uh, God, that you're still ruling and super ruling, and God, that everything according to your will and according to your purpose is going to work out for good. Forgive us of our sin and wash us and clean us. Uh, make us more like you, God, more loving, more kind, more gracious, more giving, uh, because God, in the latter days, we want to see you when this world comes to an end. So we thank you in advance, God, for all you've done. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus, we pray, and the people of God said, amen, amen, and amen. Uh, let's look at let's look at uh, a passage of scripture uh, that was one of uh, my pastor, uh, my, my my father in the ministry, the Reverend Roosevelt Henderson. This is one of his favorite passages of scripture, and and I remember him preaching from this many times. And the Lord led me uh, to this passage on today. And uh, pray with me as we as we go to Second Kings chapter number four. Uh, the entire pericope is, is uh, or the entire uh, corpus of verses is 8 through 37. And read that in your leisure. Second Kings chapter lived there and she urged him to come to her home for a meal. After that, whenever he passed that way, he would stop there for something to eat. Uh, she said to her husband, I'm sure this man who stops in from time to time is a holy man of God. Let's build a small room for him on the roof and furnish it with a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp. Then he will have a place to stay whenever he comes by. Later, Elisha asked Gehazi, his servant, what can we do for her? Gehazi replied, she doesn't have a son, and her husband is an old man. Call her back again, Elisha told him. When the woman returned, Elisha said to her, 
as she stood in the doorway, next year this time you will be holding a son in your arms. No, my Lord, she cried, oh man of God, don't deceive me and get my hopes up like that. But sure enough, the woman soon became pregnant. And at that time, the following year, she had a son, just as Elisha had said. One day when her child was older, he went out to help his father who was working with the harvesters. Suddenly he cried out, my head hurts, my head hurts. His father said to one of the servants, carry him home to his mother. So the servant took him home and the mother held him on her lap, but around noontime, he died. Verse number 21 says, she carried him up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, then shut the door and left him there. She sent a message to her husband, send one of the servants and a donkey so that I might hurry to the man of God and come right back. But when he came to the man of God or when she came to the man of God at the mountain, she fell to the ground before him and caught hold of his feet. Gehazi began to push her away, but the man of God said, leave her alone. She is deeply troubled, but the Lord has not told me what it is. Then she said, did I ask you for a son, my Lord? And didn't I say, don't deceive me and get my hopes up? Then Elisha said to Gehazi, get ready to travel, take my staff and go. Don't take anyone or don't talk to anyone along the way. Go quickly and lay the staff on the child's face. Here, here's your word here. This is in verse 30. But the boy's mother said, as surely as the Lord lives, and yourself lives, I will not go home unless you go with me. So, so Elisha returned with her. Uh, as surely as the Lord lives, I will not go home unless you go with me. I want to talk this morning from this subject, good mothers never give up. Good mothers never give up. I don't know whether the astonishment and amazement that I feel right now outweighs the horror and the heartbreak I'm experiencing at the same time, because on this Mother's Day in the year 2020, the front page news is again chronicling the, tra the tragedy, tragedy of another mother that has suffered the sudden and unnecessary death of her child due to the racist and criminal actions of two white men with guns who viewed blackness as suspicious and threatening, thereby requiring their corrective actions and intervention. To the long list of mothers of young men and women like Botham Jean, Tamir Rice, Jordan Davis, Sean Reed, Sandra Bland, Mike Brown, Tanisha Anderson, Amadou Diallo, Walter Scott, Philandro Castile, Eric Gardner, Freddie Gray, Trayvon Martin, and the dozens and dozens of others, we now add the name of Mrs. Wanda Cooper Jones, whose son, Ahmaud Aubrey, was gunned down unmercifully as he was doing what he normally did every day, simply jogging through the nearby neighborhood in Brunswick, Georgia. Uh, one of the tired and worn out cliches we frequently hear when these types of tragedies occur is that black folks always want to make these situations about race which begs the question, what other conclusions can we come to when the stark reality and all of these tragedies points to the fact uh, that these type of unwarranted killings never, never, let me say it again, never happen if the roles were reversed. Can, can you imagine with me if, if, if a white jogger with shorts on and a Florida Gators t-shirt was uh, jogging through uh, a black neighborhood uh, and, 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 and two black men, a son and a father jumped in a truck, uh, and gave chase with guns because he looks like he was out of place. And the jogger ends up dead face down on the corner of Moncrees and West 45th street from an altercation with these two black men. And when the police arrives, nobody goes to jail. Nobody gets arrested. I, I won't even give you a second to ponder that scenario because we know that not only would this never happen, uh, it actually never happens. Uh, Ahmad's mother, like scores of other mothers uh, before her who have been propelled into the national spotlight because her child was the latest victim of walking or driving or banking or sleeping or barbecuing or being in a park or reading or now jogging while black, uh, simply wanted the world to know that Ahmad was kind, humble, well-mannered, and most of all, he was loved by his family and by his peers. For 74 days, the murder of, uh, of, of Ahmad uh, Aubrey went without 
uh, went about the murderers of abroad of Ahmad Aubrey went about their daily lives as if nothing had happened. Uh, but the persistence and the, the, the perseverance of Ma's mother uh, never gave up and she never gave in. Uh, the Aubrey family had initially been told by the police that Maude was shot by a homeowner who had caught him burglarizing his house, which they knew was a lie. Uh, and with the help of the pastors and the NAACP leaders, family attorneys, and the fortunate release of that disturbing video. And can I just say, thank God for Steve Jobs right now for cell phone video technology. Uh, Miss Wanda uh, Cooper Jones saw the killers of her son finally arrested on May 8th. Uh, what would have been Maude's uh, 26th birthday. The idiot who took the video thought that he, by releasing it, he would provide validation of the killer's story, but look how God turned it around. Uh, that's really a shouting point good enough to preach for for the rest of my 12 or 13 minutes with you uh, because it's confirmation that what the enemy meant for good, God has the ability to turn it around. Uh, one of the first Facebook posts said uh, the police didn't arrest the killers because they saw the video. They arrested the killers because we saw the video. I, I like that. In, in the words of Bishop McKissick uh, Jr., won't he do it? Won't he do it? Can, can I just bless somebody's spirit today that whatever the enemy has planned for your de destruction, God is in the midst of turning it around right now for your good. He's turning around your haters, turning around liars turning around backstabbers and ditch diggers. God is turning around what the enemy meant for your destruction. Uh, mothers are fierce advocates for their children and they never, they never, never give up on them. Help, help me preach this, if you will, out there in virtual space. Come on, say, good mothers never give up. Yeah, good mothers never give up. This, this passage of scripture, which I submit for your consideration this morning, unfortunately involves another mother dealing with the tragic death of a beloved son. Uh, this text deals with the life experiences of a person uh, who has come to be known in biblical lore as the Shunammite woman. Uh, for verses eight uh, opens up by saying, one day Elijah journeys through Shunam and there he meets a woman. Uh, but this was no ordinary woman because the text says this was a noble woman. Uh, in other words, she was a noble person of the community, well off and well to do, well respected by those who knew her. Uh, she was a person of prominence, but someone whose piety predominated her position. Uh, for in other words, Elijah was passing through Shunem, but she recognized that he was a man of God. And she persuaded him to stop and have a meal at her house. Noticing that Elisha passed that way often, she asked her husband's permission to build a room on the roof and to furnish it with a bed, a lamp, a table, and a chair so that the man of God could be comfortable whenever he was passing through. The Shunammite woman actions validates the word of Matthew 10 and 31, which says, uh, whoever receives a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Uh, and because of the kindness of this woman who uh, realized uh, that she had been blessed to be a blessing, the prophet told her, uh, sent his servant Gehazi to inquire what was, what, what was it that he could do for her. Being an humble woman, she declined any favor from the prophet, uh, but the servant pointed out the obvious to Elijah, that the woman had no children and her husband was now an old man. And so the prophet prophesied to the woman that in the year to come, she would have a son and true to the prophet's word, the woman conceived and bore a son. Verse number 18 lets us know that the woman, uh, that the child continued to grow up. Uh, but one day while he was out in the field with his father, he began to have a severe condition of the head. Uh, the Bible doesn't specifically define what the problem was, but indicated the boy simply said, my head hurts, my head hurts. Uh, the father, not knowing what to do, did what came naturally, and that was to take the boy to his mother. Uh, the boy sat in his mother's knee until about noon, but then the Bible says the boy died. Uh, there are so many preaching points in this text today, but, but allow me just to continue to cut across the field and get to the main point of the text. But, but let me stop just one for a second and just let you know that mothers have a natural instinct for doing the right thing, even when they don't know what the right thing is. Uh, 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 my middle child, TC, passed out uh, and stopped breathing when he was about eight months old. And while I was on the phone about to lose my mind screaming uh, at the ATM uh, folks because they weren't getting there fast enough, his mama picked him up and started pacing, patting, and praying. 
Y'all hear me? She started pacing, patting, and praying. She was pacing up and down the floor. She was patting the boy on his arm, patting the boy on his back, patting the boy on his head, and praying, calling out to God for help. And by the time the ambulance got there, Sister Brenna had already paced, patted, and prayed that boy back to life. And while the ambulance drivers were in the parking lot, we began to give God praise because mamas know to do stuff that they don't even know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Shunammite woman, she didn't really know. She didn't really know what she was supposed to do. But immediately she went into action and took the boy up to the prophet's room and laid uh, him on the prophet's bed and shut the, shut the door. She called to her husband uh, to have one of the servants saddle up a donkey so she could uh, travel up to see the man of God. Uh, the prophet was at Mount Karma, which was about a 20 mile journey. And, and, and when, when he saw the woman coming from afar off, he sent his servant to inquire if everything was all right. Uh, uh, the, pro the servant went down and said, ma'am, uh, are you all right? Is your husband all right? Uh, is, your, is your son all right? But the woman brushed the servant aside because she needed to get to the prophet. And, and when she came to get to the prophet, she fell uh, down at his feet. Th this is where the text gets good uh, right here because the servant tried to push her away. But Elisha said, leave her alone because I see that she's in great pain and great agony and the Lord has not revealed to me what's going on right now. Uh, so as the woman began to tell him about the plight of her son, Elisha told the servant to take his staff and to go back and check on the boy's well-being. Uh, but I'm in verse 30, verse number 30. The woman said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave without you. Uh, it took me a while to get there, but that's your word today. She said, I will not leave without you. In other words, I'm not giving up. I'm not letting you go. Good mothers just don't Give up no matter what the condition of their child is, no matter uh, what their child might be going through, no matter how much their child may have messed up, no matter how broken their children may seem, no matter what it might appear, no matter how far they have fallen, good mothers do not give up on their children. Can we just tell God thank you for good mothers today? I want to hurry. I want to hurry to the point right here because because I'm excited about this. I'm excited about this message because the first thing uh, that that the lesson taught me is that good mothers don't give up because they share a unique perspective on life. Yeah, they share a unique perspective on life. In verse number sixteen. When Elisha summoned the woman and told her uh, that one year she was going to give birth to a son, the woman immediately said, "No, my lord, don't lie to your servant." Don't trick me. Don't fool me like that. Uh, in other words, man of God, don't play with me because this is nothing to play with. Uh, mothers understand the seriousness, the seriousness of the process that brings life into the world. Uh, it's a divine process that's closely akin to the very act of God scooping up clay into his hands and molding it into a human being, then blowing the breath of life uh, into it and it becoming a living creature. Uh, Daddy can lay down a few minutes and rise up feeling like he's accomplished something, but for nine months, the woman nurtures and nourishes uh, and carries a child in her womb. Uh, the gestation process is a time between conception and birth of a child uh, in, in which changes occur both in the mother and the child that binds them together in an unbreakable bond. Hormonal changes occur in the woman's body that alters her physical and emotional being. Mothers experience the movement, the growth, and the kicking of a human life on the inside of her body. Oxygen and nutrient-rich blood is passed from the mother uh, to the child through the umbilical cord that connects them together in a genetic and a spiritual manner that could only be understood by a mother. Uh, so mothers have a unique perspective on life because life uh, itself has uh, literally been conceived, nurtured, and birthed through the woman. Uh, she shares this unique perspective, and because of that, she sees beyond the natural appearances. Y'all hear me today? Mothers, mothers understand uh, uh, what it means to give birth. Uh, they, they, they understand uh, what they have given birth to uh, because, because they know how they have fed their children while uh, they were uh, in the inside of their womb, how they have 
read to them while they were on the inside of their womb, how they have fed them mentally and physically and spiritually for nine months. They understand the potential that's in their womb that comes out into the earth. Uh, mothers know what they've implanted in their children during their developmental stages. They know how they taught them, how they encouraged them, how they corrected them, how they cried with them. They understand the potential of the gift uh, that God has nurtured through them. So they look past the normal appearances and they see the potential. Uh, they look past the natural appearances and they see the promise that the child has. Uh, when the father uh, uh, brought the son uh, to, to his mother uh, uh, and, and laid the mother in, laid the son in the boy's lap, uh, uh, the woman, the, the boy died while he was laying in the woman's lap. Uh, and, and on the natural, the boy was laying in her, in her lap dead. Uh, but the woman saw past the obvious. She, she was able to see past the outside and look on the inside. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but can I tell you that the natural appearances will fool you sometimes? When the prophet Samuel went to Jesse's house looking to anoint the new king of Israel, Jesse paraded all of his sons out who looked like they ought to be king. Uh, but God didn't want somebody that looked like they were king because God doesn't look on the outside, but God sees the heart. And mothers have the ability to see the heart of their children. That's why they never give up on them, no matter what it looks like on the outside, no matter what the outward appearance might suggest. On the outside, the Shunammite woman's son looked like he was dead, but she saw life. Uh, on the outside, things looked desperate, but she saw hope. On, on, on the outside, things looked like it was final, but she said the final word hadn't been spoken because God always has the final word. Can I give somebody, can somebody just give God praise that he always has the final word? She saw beyond the natural, and because she saw beyond the natural, it allowed her to speak with an unknowing knowing. Let me say that again a little bit slower. Uh, she spoke with an unknowing Knowing. Mm, what you talking about, preacher? What you talking about? I told you earlier that mothers have the ability to do the right thing even when they don't know what the right thing is. Truth of the matter is that the Shunammite woman didn't really know what to do, so she just did what she knew to do. Uh, uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but, but, but look at the text. When, when the boy died, uh, she put him in the prophet's room. She laid him on the prophet's bed. She told her husband to have the servants prepare a donkey because I'm going to make a trip to see the prophets. When her husband asked her why she's going to the prophet with such urgency, she didn't even give him an explanation. She didn't even give him a report on the boy's condition. She just simply said, it's well. Yeah, yeah, put a pin in that. Come on, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. When she got to Mount Carmel, uh, the prophet uh, sent sent the servant Gehazi out to determine what was going on with her. Gehazi got out there and said, ma'am, are you all right? Uh, how's your husband? Is he okay? Uh, uh, is, is your son doing, doing all right? Uh, after he had made all these inquiries, she just brushed, brushed past the servant and said, it's well. It is, it is, it is well. The words, the words, uh, uh, it is well is translated from the Hebrew word shalom, which means peace a well-being. Uh, to speak this word in the midst of calamity, uh, to speak this word in the midst of death, to speak this word in the midst of crisis, uh, with your world shattered all around you, with your son uh, back 20 miles at the house, laying on the bed dead. Uh, it, it's the same thing uh, that, that Paul tells us in Romans when you have to speak those things that are not as though they were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In other words, in other words, she is speaking uh, with an unknown knowing. Yeah, I, 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 I just laid my son in the prophet's bed, but it's still well. Uh, I, I, I don't know what I'm going to encounter in this 20 mile trip to Mount Carmel, but it is well. Come on, y'all help me today. I'm, I'm not sure what the prophet's reaction is going to be when I get there, but it is. It is well. I need for y'all. I need for y'all to come just a little bit closer uh, to your laptop so I can bring this down where you can get it. You you remember the most tragic? Think back just for a minute. The most tragic thing uh, that happened in your life when you were growing up. 
Uh, you thought that your life was over. You thought that you would never recover. That tragic accident that, that left you broken in the hospital. You, you, somebody got with the wrong crowd and, and, and got in trouble and, and, and had to spend a night in jail and you thought your life was over. Some, somebody got abused. Somebody uh, uh, may, may, may have been taken advantage of. Some, somebody may have become a father at an early age or, or an unexpected mother at a young age and, and you thought your life was over but your mama spoke five little words in your spirit that turned your life around. I know all of y'all heard these words. Come on. That mama used to say, it's going to be all right, baby. Y'all come on, talk to me today. It's, it's going to be all right, sugar. Yeah, I don't know what your mama called you. It's going to be all right, pudding. Mm -hmm. it, it's going to be all right, pumpkin. I don't know what your mama called you, but it looked like things got better when you heard those Five words released into the atmosphere. Everything is going to be all right. Because mothers have the ability to speak with an unknown knowing. Uh, they, they don't know how, uh, but they know that everything is going to be all right. Uh, they, they can't explain how it's going to work out, but they know everything is going to be all right. All right, y'all. Y'all know I'd take it home right here if, if I was in the sanctuary. But let me let me give you the last point. Uh, uh, they share this unique perspective on life. They see beyond the natural. Uh, they speak with an unknown assurance. Uh, but then they have a sense uh, uh, of the potential of a miracle. Yeah, I, I want to encourage some mother. I wanna I wanna even encourage some father. Uh, because in the wake of this tragic death of Ahmad Aubrey, uh, just two months ago, all of us uh, are, are unsettled in our emotions. All, all of us uh, have broken hearts. All of us uh, can visualize our children. I know I can see my sons uh, in, in that video right now. And, and as we continue uh, to deal with, uh, with, with this perpetual de-evaluation of blackness and black life, where, where, where blackness has been weaponized. Uh, it's been weaponized. So anytime uh, people see blackness, they, they, they see a, a threatening person. They see a threatening individual, which means that, that no matter whether you have a gun or not, you are never unarmed because they see your very skin as being something that threatens them. Uh, confronted with the justice system uh, that has one standard for whites and another standard for people of color, faced with the reality that in all you do to raise your children uh, to live their best life that God has created him or her for, in reality, their well-being and their very existence is really out of your control. I want to encourage you today uh, that God is still in the miracle working business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I know it's not an easy pill to swallow. Uh, uh, it, it's really not a comforting concept in times like these, but the truth of the matter is bad out in scripture that God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts and and, and, and it's, it's in the midst of tragedy that God can bring hope. Uh, it's, it's in the midst of heartache that God can birth an everlasting peace. Uh, God can give you a peace that surpasses all understanding. Uh, it is in the reality of death that God can give new life. Uh, yeah, yeah, this Shunammite woman doesn't really understand the complexity of all that has happened within this short period of her son's life and certain death. Uh, but she makes it to the prophet and falls on his feet. Uh, to make her petition. Uh, and when the prophet uh, servant tries to shoo her away, she holds on tight and she says, as long as the Lord lives, I'm not going to leave without you. As long as the Lord lives, I'm not going to turn back. As long as the Lord lives, I'm never going to give up because I believe as long as the Lord lives, there is still the possibility of a miracle. You got to believe that God is still alive. Yeah, yeah. You got to believe that as long as God is alive, there's a possibility of a blessing. There's a possibility of a breakthrough. So don't ever give up. Don't give up on your children. 
Uh, don't give up on the promise. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Don't quit because the Shunammite woman is speaking prophetically past death. She's speaking prophetically past her grief and past her heartache, saying that as long as the Lord lives, I believe that God can turn things around. I think we have witness of that because just a few weeks ago, we celebrated the life of Jesus Christ who uh, had walked the earth for 33 long years. We, we celebrated the life of the man who had opened up deaf, eye, deaf ears and, 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 and opened up blinded eyes. We, we celebrated the life of the man who had uh, made the lame walk, uh, the man who had raised Lazarus from the dead, somebody who had done nothing but good all of his life, somebody that loved everybody and said, love ye one another, that you might be known as my disciples. That same man that showed love to everybody was hung out on a cruel, rugged cross, nails in his head, nails in his hand, nails in his feet, pierced in his side. But God said that I can bring a good thing out of defeat. He hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and on a Friday evening, he died. They buried him in a bar tomb and he stayed there all night Friday. Y'all come on, help me. He stayed there all day Saturday. But early on Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hand. And the songwriter did a very appropriate job when he said, because he lives. Come on, help me today. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. I'm not fearing anyone. I'm not fearing any man. I'm not fearing any disease. I'm not fearing any sickness. Just because he lives, I can face tomorrow because I know who holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Come on and give God praise wherever you are right now that because God lives, miracles are still possible. Blessings are still in his hand. God can turn things around just because he lives. So don't give up. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your faith. Don't give up on your hope. Don't give up on your dreams. Don't give up on the promise that God has given you because God has the ability to make everything all right. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. We bless and praise each and every one of you today and uh, thank you for uh, sharing in this word because truly uh, good mothers don't give up. Not only good mothers don't give up, but, but good Christians don't give up. People of faith don't give up. No matter what the circumstances, no matter what the situation uh, we are going through uh, uh, an unprecedented situation right now with coronavirus and uh, uh, over a million and uh, 300 people just in the United States alone who have uh, contracted the disease and, and almost 80,000 people who have lost their lives. Uh, we, we, we still give God praise and we still give God honor. Uh, and we know that God is still teaching us, God is still drawing us, uh, and that God is still covering us. Everything that we have said today uh, has been for someone. This word has been for someone. Uh, the, the, the underlying word is don't give up. Don't give up. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know where you are right now in your walk. Uh, but God has kept you to this day. God has sustained you. God has given you the opportunity to be with us today and to hear this word uh, so that uh, he might have the opportunity to connect with you and you connect with him uh, because he has the ability to turn your life around and to change you in ways that you never thought you could be changed. I want to extend an invitation uh, that someone today might come to get to know the Lord and might partner with him, might give their life to him, uh, might, might begin to serve him and walk in the fellowship 
uh, of a loving, a caring, and a merciful God. I just want you to lift your hand right now, wherever you are. If, if you don't know the Lord and the pardoning of your sin, just say these simple words with me. Lord, I surrender my heart, my soul, my mind. I know you have the ability to save me, to heal me, and to make me new. I give my life to you. Come into my heart. Come into my soul. Walk with me. Keep me. I believe you died for me. And now I'm going to live for you. If you said that simple prayer, said it with earnesty and, and sincerity and um, said it with a desire for God to come into your life and to take you on a new path, you are saved. You are saved. There's no doubt about it. The Bible confirms it. You believe with your mouth, with your heart and confess with your mouth, you are saved. Uh, so we, we want to extend an invitation because you don't just need to be saved, but you also need to be connected. Uh, you, you need to be connected with other believers. You need to be connected in a faithful church, a Bible-believing church that can help train you and mature you and help strengthen you in your walk with Almighty God. I want to extend an invitation for you to come and, and connect with the Greater Grant uh, African Methodist Episcopal Church, 5533 Gilchrist Road here in the city of Jacksonville. Uh, I'm, I'm the proud pastor and we have some of the um, most wonderful, beautiful members, loving members uh, in, in all of Christendom. And uh, I, we want to love on you and, and help you in your walk with the Lord. Uh, my number is 850-566-0692. And I would love uh, to talk with you and, and uh, just to share with you uh, as we are progressing back to meeting in our sanctuary, hopefully in uh, very sh a, a very sh few short weeks from now. I uh, want to encourage you. Thank you again for your giving, for your faithfulness. Uh, we, we have the opportunity to give through Give Plus as well as our checks uh, can be sent to the Greater Grant Church uh, at, at the address previously given. Um, uh, give me a call. I'll meet you at the church or if necessary, come by our finance team is usually there on Tuesdays and Fridays, and uh, we were just uh, so thankful for all that you are contributing and giving to the Lord. Uh, may the Lord keep you. May the Lord bless you today. All of you mothers, have a wonderful Mother's Day. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, we bless and praise your name. Let's, let's receive the benediction now unto him who's able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless for the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, I will say, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever. And the people of God that loved him said, amen. God bless you. Love you.